If you have watched the Tiger 660 video, you're already thinking, is it better than all the other touring motorcycles in all the ways that you care about? Its main rivals, the Kawasaki Versus 650, the Suzuki V-Strom 650, Yamaha Tracer 700 and the Honda NC750X. The Triumph Tiger Sport 660 needs to beat them all in form aspects like looks and sound and functional aspects like comfort, performance, rider aid and of course the price. Question is, does it? Looks are subjective but to me, Tiger Sport 660 is the best looking of the lot. It looks a bit inspired by exotics like the MV Agusta Turismo Veloce and the Ducati Multistrada, both of which are in a ridiculously expensive class of their own, so I promise I won't bring them up again. To me, the Versus 650 is a close second only because the dual headlamps remind me of my ZX-XR and the rear shock looks in perfect sync with the frame lines. I also like how the Tracer 700 looks but I'm sure most of us agree that the Honda NC750X may be a great bike but it's not winning a beauty pageant. I'm not a fan of the V-Strom's single headlight look but it does look like it means business. I'm curious how you would rank these 5 motorcycles on looks if that is an important criterion to you. And while you're judging a beauty pageant in the comments, let me play the exhaust notes of each of these for you to compare as well. Mm -hmm. 
I personally find the Triumph exhaust note to be the best and of course there are some of us who don't consider exhaust note to be a massive criterion for a touring motorcycle. I'm probably one of them so let me focus on the functional aspects like the engine. The Triumph's refined inline triple 660cc engine is expectedly smoother than all the others. At 79 horsepower, it's actually the most powerful engine among its competitors. Yamaha Tracer 700 comes close at 72 horsepower, but it's not available in the US, Australia, or India. US gets that engine in the Tenere 700 Avatar, which is a more serious adventure machine and will be covered in the next episode of this middleweight comparison series when I cover proper adventure bikes. So consider subscribing. The Yamaha Tracer 700 does have a little more torque at 50 foot pounds or 68 newton meters. Honda 750X has the same torque figure but the least horsepower. However, NC owners do seem to like it a lot as an all rounder motorcycle, even though some believe it's a commuter. Suzuki V Strom is the only one in this category with a 645cc 90 degree V twin engine, the one that's been bulletproof on the SV650 for decades now. It makes 70 horsepower and 47 foot pounds of torque, but it's probably the most capable tourer in this group. India only gets the V Strom 650 XT, UK and US get two variants the 650 for touring and the 650 XT for adventure. Kawasaki vs 650's 649 parallel twin engine makes 66 horsepower and 47 foot pounds of torque. It's been in the game since 2007 and has made a name for itself as the staple tourer in the middleweight segment. So it's hard to crown any of these engines as the best, but there's no doubt that the Triumph engine's smoothness would be appreciated on long rides. The trick was to keep the overall motorcycle weight down to attract riders who don't like very heavy or very expensive motorcycles, kinda like me. At 206 kilos or 454 pounds wet weight, the Tiger 660 is the second lightest bike in this comparison because the Tracer 7 weighs 196 kilos. The Versus 650 is the heaviest at 215 kilos. A fully loaded Versus 650 LT weighs 227 kilos or 500 pounds. The V Strom base variant weighs 213 kgs, but once you load it with accessories and panniers, it smashes the scales at 240 kilos, which is a whopping 530 pounds. The Honda also has a 214 kilos hot bath. It is important to understand though that the weight only becomes a factor when the bike has to be parked walked or god forbid picked up. On the go you're not gonna notice the weight. The transmission you will. The V-Strom and the Tracer have 6 speed manual transmission that works just fine for touring. The Versus 650 also gets an assist slipper clutch to make the clutch pull lighter and avoid wheel lockup during aggressive downshifts. You know in case you're planning to take a corner like Rossi when you're touring. The Triumph Tiger 660 gets an assist slipper clutch too but it gets fancier with a bi-directional quick shifter thanks to the ride-by-wire throttle. The Honda NC750X is the most fancy in this area with a dual clutch transmission option which is kinda like automatic transmission with pedal shifters. I will talk more about the rider aids at the end of the video but let me first touch upon suspension. Triumph Tiger 660 has the same Showa 41mm non-adjustable USD forks as the Trident, however, I was hoping they gave the suspension enough travel and adjustability and I cannot really say they have disappointed. The front forks and the rear shock get 4.9 inch of suspension travel which is comparable to the other 4 bikes. And I'm super glad that the Tiger 660, just like the Versus, the V-Strom and the Tracer also gets a remote preload adjuster that lets you adjust preload without tools, so it's particularly convenient if you often switch between riding solo and with a passenger or even when the luggage weight varies a lot. The Honda has non-adjustable Showa forks and preload adjustable Prolink shock which is actually pretty good. I have had two Hondas with that shock and I liked it for touring. You will notice that the V-Strom, the Versus and the Tracer have a little more suspension adjustability compared to the Tiger 660, but based on my 13 years of riding experience that includes a saddle sword challenge attempt, I feel like they can all work for long touring and street riding. If you try some off-road antics, it will depend a lot on your individual skills and what you can make the bike do. From the factory, the ground clearance, the suspension, geometry, wheels, the gearing is not meant for hardcore off-roading on any of these. Another important factor for touring is how far would the motorcycle take you before you need a fuel stop. Suzuki V-Strom 650 claims to have the highest range at 460 km which is 290 miles plus on a single tank. Honda CB750X has the smallest tank at 14 liters but the fuel economy is the best and takes 4 liters for every 100 km. So it gives an effective range of 340 km or 210 miles. The Tracer has the same fuel 
fuel efficiency as the V-Strom, but a 17 liter or 4.5 US gallon tank limits its range to about 390 kilometers or 240 miles, which is quite respectable in my opinion. Tiger 660 has the same tank size and similar fuel efficiency as the Tracer and has the potential to make it to about 370 kilometers or 230 miles on one tank. The Versus 650 has the biggest fuel tank at 21 liters and with a 20 kilometer per liter fuel consumption, it can do about 400 kilometers or 250 miles on a single tank. I do want to point out that these fuel efficiency figures and consequent range figures are based on ideal conditions as perceived by various testers and manufacturers. In the real world, they will depend a lot on your riding style, riding conditions and even the fuel quality you will get in the remote corners of the world when you're touring. And going from how far can the motorcycle go to how far can you go comfortably, that is, let's compare the ergonomics. Triumph Tiger Sport 660 windscreen is adjustable on the go with a pretty convenient one-hand adjustment. Hopefully the highest setting would make the windscreen tall enough to cut out wind buffeting and reduce fatigue for most riders. In fact, that's true for stock windscreen on most of these bikes with the exception of the NC750X, which really is a bit short for touring. The Tracer and the Honda NC750X both have sometimes been called out for uncomfortable hard seats, though Yamaha claims that they have fixed that in 2020 for the Tracer. The Versus and V-Strom have good, comfortable seats for long hauls. The Tiger 660 Riders Triangle is pretty comfortable because of the wide handlebars and upright seating position. Triumph seems to have paid a lot of attention to comfort and convenience and we're happy to point out the passenger foot pegs being carefully thought out as well. Another important aspect is the seat height. Even though the manufacturers call these sports tourers, they are stuck somewhere between a street bike and a wannabe adventure bike. The ground clearance is a bit high for street use but not enough for off-road athletics. The Versus and V-Strom both have 6.7 inches or 170 mm ground clearance but the seat height is roughly 33 inches. Triumph has made a good attempt at this balancing act and the seat height comes 1 mm under the Suzuki V-Strom at 835mm or 32.8 inches. The Yamaha Tracer has actually got the worst configuration when it comes to height. The ground clearance is less than the other two at 5.5 inches but the seat height is still 33.1 inches. Although these seats would be a bit of a challenge for riders any shorter than 5.6 to 5.8, there are plenty of short riders who eventually figure out the tips and tricks for riding taller bikes. The Honda NC750X has a practical for street 5.6 inches ground clearance and the most approachable 31.6 inches seat height. That would mean bringing the bike to a stop is not an intimidating prospect. Which brings me to brakes and wheels. All five bikes have ABS, the Honda is the only one with a single 320mm disc up front with Nissan two-piston calipers. The rest of the bikes have dual discs up front but the Tracer is the only one with four piston calipers. Having said that, none of these bikes are particularly criticized for lack of braking power for the purpose they are built for. The Triumph Tiger 660 has steel braided brake lines and the same brakes on the Trident have been deemed to be sufficient. The wheel size and the tire dimensions are quite interesting on these five motorcycles. The V-Strom is the only one with a 19-inch front wheel with a 11080 tall and thin front tire. The rest of them have standard 120, 70, 17 fronts. The V-Strom rear is also thinner, 150, 70 on a 17-inch wheel. Tiger and Tracer have 180, 55, 17s in the rear. The Versus 650 and the Honda NC750X have the same rear wheel size. Interestingly, all these bikes are making the handling, fuel efficiency, grip and durability work for sports touring. And talking of ease, Versus, V-Strom and Tracer don't have any major electronic aids. The Honda NC750X has ride-by-wire, so the DCT version does have 4 rider modes and tracking control. Triumph didn't have to do a lot to beat them all on rider aids. The Tiger has switchable traction control, two riding modes, a rain and road, a bi-directional quick shifter, tire pressure monitoring system and heated grips that no other bike has in this category. The one thing that they missed and a lot of people did want on the Tiger 660 is a cruise control. That would have been a major differentiator from the competition but it seems like Triumph decided to cut corners in that one area even the Tiger 850 Sport doesn't get one. I'm putting up the prices for top countries where my viewers are. This should give an idea to most about their respective regions. Whether the Tiger Sports 660 is the best sports tourer or not depends on which of these criteria matter the most to you. Next week, I will bring a comparison of more committed middleweight adventure touring motorcycles, so stay tuned. This is for us helping you choose your next favorite bike.